hi guys, Mehdi here from Mehdi's Bushcraft and Self Reliance. Uh, welcome to this video which will be about knife sharpening and that's on a request from uh, Jamie from Belgium Outdoors. Uh, he asked me to make a video about knife sharpening last year when he was doing his uh, video response to my 750 giveaway. Um, so I'm going to perform some knife sharpening today. And what I brought with me is this case, and I'm going to show you what's uh, inside. Well, I will open the case for you and show you what's inside. Uh, these are the things I uh, use for sharpening knives. These are my Japanese whetstones, uh, my strop, uh, things to place the, stains, the stones on. Stain is Dutch, <laughs> confusing. Uh, my oil, my stropping paste, some brushes to uh, to clean knives. Can you see it? No, you can't. No, you can. So what I said, the oil, stropping paste, uh, different brushes to uh, to clean things, all kinds of bits and bobs to. Uh, sharpen knives. It's a very complete set. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Just behind this, got some sandpaper, instruction booklet for a sharpening device that I've got from China. Uh, this hand cleaning paste because I will need that afterwards to clean my hands. It's very complete and uh, yeah, it's just what I need and what I take with me when I go on uh, sharpening knives. Uh, uh, I'm not going to use all of this but uh, I'll show you what I think is uh, one of the best ways to uh, sharpen your knife at home. Well, the way you sharpen your knife also depends on what kind of knife you have. Uh, to my opinion, the best bushcraft knife is made of carbon steel, which is uh, much softer than the, the stainless steel. It's easier to sharpen and it uh, stays sharp for a very long time if you uh, have sharpened it in the right way. Uh, and good maintenance is always important. Uh, second, it's the, the grind and what I uh, mean is the, the good bushcraft knife has a Scandi uh, or Scandinavian grind which you can see on this picture. Grinds like these are much more difficult to sharpen. Uh, often you will need uh, special machines, things like that especially with a hollow grind or so. But the Scandi grind is very, very simple. And it's also one of the, the best grinds to, uh, to make fine cuts in, in wood, which you will do in bushcraft, obviously. Uh, I've brought a traditional Scandinavian knife. And here you can see the edge and it goes from here to here to the sharp uh, side. Another rather cheap but uh, a very good bushcraft knife it's uh, the Mora also with a scandy grind. As I told you I brought uh, I bring my suitcase with all the sharpening equipment with me uh, to people to sharpen their knives. This is one of the knives I've got yesterday, uh, which I will try to sharpen. It's very blunt. So this will be my uh, new job today. I've got different stones. Normally uh, a water stone, like this one from Wusthof, which is two-sided with a 400 and 2000 grit. This is a perfect stone to take with you on a, a base camp. Uh, 
I think it's too heavy to put inside your backpack all the time and carry around but uh, it's perfect uh, to use uh, on base camp and what you've got to do is put uh, in the water for about 10-15 minutes uh, until you see no more uh, air bubbles coming out of it that's how you treat these stones but the stones I use at home are uh, Japanese uh, Naniwa super water stones uh, Naniwa has different kind of stones there are ceramic stones uh, but Japanese and what I like about them is you don't have to soak them in water you just make them wet and you can use them the, you can't find uh, the super water stone anymore because they replaced it for the Naniwa specialty stones uh, and they seem to be a little bit better but well, I'm very happy with uh, these stones I've got different grids at 200, 20, 400, 800, 2000 and this is a combination stone of uh, 3000 and 10,000 grit uh, you use 200 till 600 uh, to, to sharpen the knife which is still in, uh, in pretty good uh, shape like this knife for example there are no, uh, no gaps it doesn't look like a serrated knife I know a few years ago uh, someone asked me to sharpen his knife and I don't know what he did with it, like he was, he's been cutting uh, stone or something Be because I had to make a totally new edge on it well the, <laughs> you can't use it on these stones uh, I had to use it on this very coarse stone it's maybe uh, 40 grit or something and I did it all by hand and it, it took me hours to uh, to make a new edge and then sharpen it on these stones afterwards but nice which are in a good shape you can use on a 200 till 600 grit stone then you go to the 2000 till 3000 grit to have a better result than uh, when they come from the factory and when you use 5000 till 10000 grit your uh, knife will be razor sharp uh, after that you can uh, use a, a strop which I will show you later uh, today I will do my Mora knife and I because it's pretty well in shape I will use 800 a 2000 and an 8000 grit stone Put these away. Well, the first thing I always do before I start uh, sharpening is cleaning my knife. There could be oil and resin and other things on it. And I have some 97% uh, alcohol and a kitchen towel. And I will clean the knife. Be careful, you go the, the right way, don't go this way because you might cut your fingers. Always go that way. Same on the other side. Make sure you don't cut yourself. The reason I clean my knives is because I don't want all the dirt oil and grease uh, to get on my stones I want to keep them as clean as possible that's the first step the second step I don't know if you can see there are some stains on the knife to clean that I will use 
this, I don't know how you call this in English, I don't even know the Dutch name for it. It's a kind of rubber with uh, fine sand powder or so in it. They use it in, uh, in a garage. You, you won't find it everywhere, but if you go to a special uh, garage or a car painting shop, uh, they might help you. It comes in different grids as well. And I use that to take all the stains off my knife. I don't have to use it here because I will sharpen that and it will be nice and shiny. looks a lot better. Now let's go to the shop. What I love is these clamps to put your stone in. Uh, we'll start with the 800 grit stone. Put it in like this and you tie it with two screws. This won't slip on the table. This I will use later. That's got to be soaked. Okay. What I do, I, I make the stone wet. That's just enough. When you're uh, using a, a traditional wet stone, uh, water stone, uh, you have to soak it for 10 to 15 minutes. And when you're sharpening, you have to be sure that there's always a, a small layer of water on it. Don't let it get dry. Uh, same for these stones, they shouldn't get dry. I've seen several methods uh, and I'm basically using two methods of sharpening on these stones. First thing you do is put the knife flat on the stone. Then you tilt the knife on the bevel and that's how you get the right angle. When you're sharpening don't put your fingers in front because you will slice your finger, piece of your finger off, but find the right angle and then one of the methods is you go over the stone like this about 20-25 times. And you see this is getting black and that's the metal coming off the knife. When you've done 20-25 times you do the same thing the other way around. So turn your knife, put it flat and try to find the, the right angle. And there you go. The method I use, it's uh, basically the method from the Japanese salt makers and the sushi masters who sharpen their knives almost every day. And then I put it again on the stone I tilt till I get the edge, the right angle on the stone. And I go forward and backwards like this. And what's very important, you have to listen to the sound. When the sound changes, it means your knife is in the wrong angle should be constantly the same sound. I do that about 30-40 times. 
Oh, I've done this about 40 times now, and as you can see, the stone is getting pretty grey, dark. Uh, it's all metal. Don't take this off because it's uh, it's essential to sharpen your knife. It's not, in fact, the stone that sharpens your knife. Uh, most it's what comes off. Now I make sure it's wet again. Now I'm going to do the other side. Again, like I did in the beginning, the right angle, and there we go. Well, now I've done this side, and as you can see, it has turned black. To finish it off, I will do one stroke on this side and one stroke on this side. And I do that about five, six times. And the reason why I do that is if you imagine my hand is the knife and from sharpening on one side it will go a little bit like this on the edge so to do it both ways I try to make it more uh, more straight more smooth it's already extremely sharp but I will go on with the other stone So, yep. I will take the two thousand grids. Make it wet again, and you do exactly the same as with the other stone, it's the 800 grit. So, this is the 2000. Put the knife flat, I tilt the knife so we get the right angle here, and you have to adjust a little bit for uh, this part. And then you make the same movement. What I forgot to tell you, uh, when you just start sharpening your knives the first time and you have no experience, uh, what could be helpful is uh, to have a permanent marker and put some ink on the bevel just like this do the same on the other side And this helps you to see if you really have the right angle because only when you have the right angle you will take away all the ink you see it's almost gone Sorry guys, I had to change my cam battery. 
what I wanted to show you is here I missed a little bit in here on the point. So I make sure to get that as you can hear it's one sound it makes. You see it's almost gone. Now I change the, the the angle. You hear the sound is different. It should be like this. Just don't push too hard. Push a little bit. If you push too hard, you uh, especially with, with the high grit stones, it's it's a uh, quite soft material, and you will cut into it. You will damage your stone and probably your knife as well. And these stones are rather expensive. Uh, some of my Japanese stones are about 100 euros, which I find expensive. I do this again about 30 times. Okay, I've done this about 30 times, now it's time to turn the knife and do the other side. You see there's no green left anymore. Again the same principle, put the knife on the stone, tilt it until you get the right angle. And there we go. Okay, about 30 times again, time to go over and over on every side, just about 10 times, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine, ten. Now it's time for the eight thousand grids. With these high uh, grid stones, I used this extra stone. And I go over my sharpening stone. And what you get is a kind of slurry. This slurry will help you to sharpen or in fact polishing uh, the edge of the knife. You see this is perfect. And again, let's wash the knife a little bit. I do it the same way. Make sure it's wet, just a few drops. Put a knife on the stone, tilt the knife till you get the right angle. 
and there I go. And you see immediately I get those grey black uh, marks. And you hear the difference in sound. This goes very, very smoothly. You almost don't hear the knife. Very slight pressure you use. So the knife won't uh, get into the stone. Okay, I've done this side 30 times, make sure it's wet again, I'm going to make some more slurry. It's also a good way to clean the stones. Now I'll do the other side, put the knife on the stone. Try to get the right angle, and there we go. Okay. Again, about ten times on each side. Just two. Now it should be perfectly sharp, but I'm not ready yet. I put away the stones. Okay, the next thing I use is a strop. I've got here two strops I brought from the UK last year. This one is with uh, some stropping paste on it, and this is the strop I've made myself. Just a piece of wood. Uh, I stick the leather on it, the, the, the back side of the leather on top and what I use as a stropping paste it's a uh, Tormac, does it say in English, yeah, a honing compound for leather honing wheels etc etc. This is the, the cheapest it's much cheaper than the stuff from Dovo. There's already some paste on it. Let's make sure there's enough. And you could even use toothpaste. Not recommended, but if you don't have anything else, and you really have to strop your knife, then even toothpaste will do. The reason why I want to strop the knife is again, I will show it with my hands. This would be perfectly sharp, but what happens, and that's on a microscopic level. Uh, it's a little bit like this, you see, now I do this, this, but I want to have it like this, really sharp. So, I put my knife on the strop, on the right angle, and I go 25 times in this direction, 25, 30 times. Now 
Now we go 25 times on the other side. Again, put your knife on it in the right angle and just pull it. Don't go that way because you will cut into the leather. Something you don't want. And make sure you take the whole knife from the beginning. Turn it a little bit. You see? Then you get the point as well. When you've done this also 25, 30 times, you go on each side. You see? And drag it too, uh, too hard on the leather. That's no problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine. Then my straw became dark grey, black because of all the metal parts from the knife. Clean the knife again. Now it should be extremely sharp and I will try. Oh yeah. Can you see that, guys? I can shave the hair of my arm. That's uh, what I call sharp. Don't even, even have to try it on paper anymore. If it will cut your hair, it will certainly cut anything. A sharp knife, again, is very important because a blunt knife you have to, uh, to apply more pressure and you've got more risk to, uh, to slip and hit someone or even yourself. The final thing I want to do is to protect my knife against moist because the carbon steel knives, they will rust very easily prevent any oxidation. I put some oil on it. I go like this, very careful. I won't cut through the cloth into my fingers. Now it's done and I put it back into the sheath and I will keep it till I go outside. The oil I prefer to use is Ballistol. It uh, comes from German Ballistisches Öl. And it's, you can use it for knives, weapons, uh, your guns or whatever. It's on a on natural base. You can also use it to disinfect uh, scratches and, uh, and, and wounds on your uh, skin. Uh, it's very good for skin treatment. Uh, what else? Uh, for, for leather, for wood, for almost anything. Uh, it's not poisonous, so I've just done this knife and now I can safely cut my food with it without uh, getting any trouble. It's, uh, it's a universe, uni yeah, universal, oil, universal oil. Can use it for almost anything, even on a rubber. Uh, you know, normal grease it uh, doesn't go with uh, rubber. This one, this oil does. Uh, it's perfect. Even fur you can treat with it. I might treat my arms after shaving. <laughs> 
Well, this is how I sharpen my knives at home. But when I'm in the field, I, it's far too heavy to take everything with me. Uh, I've got two options, in fact three. I take this simple two-sided sharpening stone, the coarse side and very fine side. And my favorite is my Falkneven uh, sharpening stone with a, a diamond uh, coarse side and this one is uh, very smooth. This is enough for me to sharpen my knives. But I also had, because I lost it, is a, a, a stropping, uh, stropping board, a small one like, uh, like this, which is enough uh, in, in the field. You don't need anything bigger. You can also use the back side of your belt and uh, put it on the trees and pull it very uh, tight. Then you can strop your knife. But the risk is that when it's too slack, you you uh, you may damage the edge of the knife. It has to be very uh, tight. Then uh, you can use it. But I think it's better to use uh, safer to use a, a, a stropping board like this with uh, wood underneath. Shouldn't be that thick. Just small, and you can take it with you together with your sharpening stone. Well, guys, uh, that's it. Uh, Jamie, I hope you're satisfied and uh, you finally got your uh, uh, my video for you about sharpening knives. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just ask me. Uh, maybe I have to demonstrate other things. Uh, who knows? Uh, I will go on sharpening uh, this knife for someone else. I will try to make it uh, extremely sharp and cut off all the other hands. will be a very smooth guy afterwards. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to comment and to subscribe and hope to see you uh, next time and uh, peace out. Well, I'm back for a second because I showed you this knife I was going to do for France, this kitchen knife. And this one became extremely sharp as well and I want to show you. Turn down my cam. I think you can see the hair on the knife. Some on the back sides. Uh, as you can see, also this kitchen knife became extremely sharp. Okay, thanks again for watching. See you next time. Peace out. Thank you.